శ్రీమద్భాగవతన్నామ పురాణం లోక విశ్రుతం శృణుయాత్ శ్రద్ధయాయుక్త మమ సంతోష కారణం శ్రీమద్భాగవతి వార్తా సురాణామీ దుర్లభ మేనిరే భగవద్రూపం శాస్త్రం భాగవతం కలౌ యత్రయత్ర చతుర్వక్త్ర శ్రీమద్భాగవతం భవేత్ గచ్చామి తత్ర తత్రాహం గౌర్యథాసుతవత్సల నిగమకల్పతరోర్గలితం ఫలం శుకముఖాత్ అమృతద్రవ సంయుతం పిబత భాగవతం రసమాలయం ముహురహో రసికాభువి భౌకా లెట్ మీ ఎక్స్టెండ్ అ వామ్ వెల్కమ్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ we have gathered here to taste the next terrain purana shrimad bhagavatam road by sage vedavyasa and preached by his celestial son shukacharya this stands at its zenith in the world of ancient scriptures beginning this session we would enjoy the beautiful verses with its with their glorious meanings in seven sessions although it is customary to recite the shlokas and enjoy the meanings in seven days which is known in sanskrit as saptaha as we are short of time we have packed seven sessions in five days i can assure you that we will have seven sessions but not five days we will certainly go through enough number of shlokas and both the philosophical and mythological important aspects why bhagavata purana why did it take birth how was this universe created that's the topic for us today the birth of bhagavata purana and this universe it's imperative that i know the purpose of my creation any product is produced the most important is to know the purpose of its production if not it will be misused similarly i am created i am born there must be a right purpose if i know that i would be fulfilling that purpose if i do not i would be misusing myself if i misuse a product that i possess i can realize my folly change my course use it properly but if i misuse myself it's too difficult to realize my folly once i misuse myself who will correct me my products are corrected by me i am also a product because i am created but the difference is other products are mundane insentient whereas me the jeevatma who is blessed with this body is sentient the only object which is this jeevatma that is sentient has the power to realize to think to reflect to meditate and to correct its course but we need a guide to our ways the guide is veda purana and itihasa who will i accept as my guide one who is knowledgeable who is selfless and my well wisher you cannot find a better person than vedavyasa who would possess all these three qualities vyasa was selfless 
he didn't expect anything in reciprocation from us vyasa was very knowledgeable as he is the one who classified all the four vedas in dwapara yuga and lastly vyasa is certainly my well wisher he wishes my well being because he is a god sent messenger for the well being of this universe we all know this verse vyasam vasishta naptaram shakte pautram kalmasham parasharatmajam bande shukatatam tapo nidhim this talks about the glorious lineage of veda vyasa vasishta acharya san was shakti shakti's uncomparable son was parashara parashara gave birth to veda vyasa vyasa's son was shukacharya when we take the name in fact you would only find goosebumps every one has been so selfless has worked day and night to serve this humanity to make this human being a better living being we are not animals we have limitations we can't live as we think when animals can also have limitations they can also be tamed certainly human beings can be but we can't term a tame a human being with any weapon instead it is the shloka upadesha of acharyas like vedavyasa that puts us in the right path there are totally 18 puranas which supplement the study of vedas itihasa purana abhyam vedam saup brahmayet bibhet kalpa shruta vedah mamayam pratarishyati this is a shloka from a purana it says you cannot study the veda as a stand alone text you would not be able to know the right meaning instead first study the vedas augment them by a study of itihasa and purana then you stand to gain you are clear in your understanding so without itihasa purana vedas are not complete there are two itihasas mahabharata and shri ramayana 18 puranas if you see these puranas there are six satvika puranas six rajasa purana and the last six tamasa purana the best of the satvika puranas are shri vishnu purana and shrimad bhagavata purana why is bhagavata purana held in such an esteem there is a reason for that when all other puranas are made of verses of sanskrit language this is also one but still bhagavan shri krishna mentions when i depart this material world i will physically enter bhagavata purana and reside there throughout the kali yuga so this is the significance of bhagavata purana and why it is so different from other puranas so if you go through the shlokas of bhagavata it is as such studying shri krishna himself he is found in this purana in the form of holy words in the form of sacred shlokas bhagavan is sacred it's too difficult to go close to him instead we can reach him get closer to divinity through the shlokas of shrimad bhagavata purana it is so helpful to us because in this kali yuga we are little confused options are uh, uh, the, the options cause confusion you can say so we have too many options today if you have lesser your confusion is lesser if we have too many products then it adds to your confusion this started when we had too many cars in india we had only two there was no other choices available we bought one of the two whereas today all the cars around the world are in india so nobody knows what to buy and what not to similarly when you have too many options too many books to study we are confused instead let us only listen to the great preachings to the guidances of acharyas so veda vyasa chose to preach to give the right guidance to all the human beings itihasa and purana 
although the 18 puranas are sung at different times by different people it was vedavyasa who collected them and presented in gist to humanity so bhagavata purana which is the glorious which is the crest jewel in the galaxy of puranas is nothing else than shri krishna himself given this introduction let us now deal with the first chapter of padma purana which talks about the glory of bhagavata purana we are not beginning with the first chapter of bhagavata purana instead we will first go through the verses of padma purana which talks about the greatness the importance of shrimad bhagavata purana unless one appreciates the importance we will not devote time to learn the same so first let us know how this bhagavata does good to me this is so good to me it is so easily available to me it's accessible it is too good to me and i benefit out of that how do we know that as many shlokas are possible i will go through the verses of the purana and tell you the meaning at the end of the session you have 10 minutes for your questions whatever if you have any doubt any clarification you can go ahead with your questions as per time availability i'll answer to your questions now coming to the first chapter preetihi shavunaka chittete hyato vachmi vicharya cha sarva siddhanta nishpannam samsara bhayanashanam yam pravrajanta manupetam apeta krityam dvaipayano virahakatara ajuhava putreti tanmayataya taravo vineedu tam sarvabhuta hridayam muni manatosmi this is the first invocatory verse on shri shukacharya shuka was the son of vedavyasa but he was more enlightened he was more detached than his father himself there goes a story vedavyasa and shuka were going past a pond on on a day there were many girls youth who were taking bath in that pond they did not wear all clothes when they passed when vyasa passed they went rushed grabbed their clo- clothes and hid themselves when after veda vyasa shukacharya passed the same way no girl was bothered she didn't rush to grab her clothes both of them left after a while vyasa thought i am too old whereas these girls did not bother about shukacharya who was too young they didn't want to hide themselves when shuka passed whereas they had wanted to when me a senior citizen passed by them why will it be he returned shuka never returned vedavyasa returned and he he was so inquisitive he questioned the girls why did you behave so the girls replied because you were the one who took notice of our action returned questioned us your son never noticed us when we were naked he did not notice that we didn't grab our clothes he never wanted to return and ask the reason for our action because he turned a blind eye towards us he never bothered who we were he never discriminated between a tree a human being and in human beings between a male and a female that's the reason why he is held as the most detached shukacharya left his home he left his father he went to the jungle in pursuit of brahma although his father was a detached soul he could not bear separation from shukacharya so he calls for him this shloka talks about calling sage vedavyasa who wanted to get back his son to his home but shukacharya never turned back to him shloka says yam pravrajantam anupetam apeta krityam dvaipayana virahakatara ajuhava viraha the pranks of separation he could not bear the separation from shuka ajuhava so sage vedavyasa called him putreti tanmayataya he putra ho oh my son why don't you return he didn't answer instead to the surprise of vedavyasa a tree answered ho oh father are you calling me a lion answered ho oh vedavyasa are you calling me the reason is shukacharya never discriminated between a tree himself and a lion he treated all to be the part and parcel of that parabrahma putreti 
ತನ್ಮಯತೆಯ ತರಬೋಬಿನೇದು ತಮ್ಮ ಸರ್ವಭೂತ ಹೃದಯ ಮುನಿ ಮಾನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಆಫರ್ ಮೈ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಯಸ್ ಮುನಿ ಶುಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಶುಕ ಇಸ್ ಕಿಳಿ ಎ ಪ್ಯಾರಟ್ ಕಿಳಿ ಕೊತ್ತಿಯ ಪಳಂ ಅಪ್ಪಡಿ ಏನು ತಮಿಳು ಒಂದು ಸೊಲ್ರದು ಇಫ್ ಎ ಪ್ಯಾರಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೇಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಎ ಮ್ಯಾಂಗೋ ಆರ್ ಅ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೀಮ್ಸ್ ದ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಟೇಸ್ಟಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಶುಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೇಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ದ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೇಸ್ಟಿಯರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ವೆನ್ ವೇದವ್ಯಾಸ ಪ್ರೀಸ್ಟ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಪುರಾಣ ಪುತ್ರೇತಿ ತನ್ಮಯತೆಯ ತನ್ಮಯತೆಯ ತಮ್ಮ ಸರ್ವಭೂತ ಹೃದಯ ಮುನಿ ಮಾನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ನೌ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ನೈಮಿಷಾರಣ್ಯ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಮೂವ್ ಅವರ್ ಸರ್ಸ್ ಟು ನೈಮಿಷಾರಣ್ಯ ದ ಸೇಕ್ರೆಡ್ ಸಿಟಿ ದ ಹೋಲಿ ದಿವ್ಯದೇಶಂ ಸಂಗ್ ಬೈ ತಿರುಮಂಗಿಯಾಳ್ವಾರ್ ಹಿಂಸಲ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಏಟ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಕ್ತ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಇನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಏಟ್ ಹೋಲಿ ಸೈಟ್ಸ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎಮರ್ಜ್ಡ್ ಎವಾಲ್ಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಬೈ ಎನಿ ಸ್ಕಲ್ಪ್ಚರ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಕ್ತ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಐ ಹೋಪ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಏಟ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸದರ್ನ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ತೋತಾದ್ರಿ ವಾನಮಾಮಲೈ ದೈವನಾಯಕ ಪೆರುಮಾನ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ರೀರಂಗ ಶ್ರೀರಂಗನಾಥ ದೆನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ರೀಮುಷ್ಣ ವರಾಹ ಭಗವಾನ್ ದೆನ್ ದಿ ನಾರ್ಥರ್ನ್ ಬೌಂಡರಿ ಆಫ್ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಇಸ್ ತಿರುವೆಂಗಡಂ ತಿರುಮಲೈ ವೆಂಕಟೇಶ ಪೆರುಮಾಳ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಇನ್ ಫೋರ್ ಇನ್ ಸೌತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ದೆನ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ನಾರ್ತ್ ದ ನಾರ್ಥರ್ನ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಬೋತ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಮಾಲಯಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಮುಕ್ತಿನಾಥ್ ಸಾಳಗ್ರಾಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ದ ಈಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ದ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಮಾಲಯಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಬದ್ರೀನಾಥ್ ಬದ್ರಿ ವಿಶಾಲ್ ದೆನ್ ಕಮ್ ಎ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಸೌತ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟು ಇನ್ ದ ಫುಟ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಮಾಲಯಸ್ ಯು ವುಡ್ ಫೈನ್ ಟು ದ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಪುಷ್ಕರ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ where bhagavan resides in the form of teertha pure water then to the east of uttar pradesh naimisharanya where he is in the form of trees and forest so these are the eight swayam vyakta kshetras one important of this is naimisharanya naimise animisha kshetre there is a satsang happening in naimisharanya suta pauranika the son of romaharshana is seated in the acharya seat other rishis are squatting around him shaunaka and other co rishis shaunaka and other rishis question suta pauranika as to the way of life the way of life in kali yuga shaunaka replies so this the, the communication the conveyance of shrimad bhagavata puranam was between suta pauranika and shaunaka and this conveyance is a story which is embedded between the communication the conversation between shukacharya and parikshit so this is a story in a story this is a communication a conversation within another conversation as you all know one conversation was mahabharata which was between vaishampayana and janamejaya in mahabharata there are many conversations one is between arjuna and krishna which finally became bhagavad gita another between bhishma acharya and yudhishthira which became sahasra nama so there are many conversation within the macro conversation of vaishampayana and janamejaya similarly in this case first vedavyasa recited he authored then shukacharya communicated to parikshit maharaja then within that we are talking about suta pauranika and shaunaka always it seems great epics or great works are born when great noble souls communicate when they talk between each other that comes but when we talk vambuda vadu preeti hi shavanaka chittete hyato vachmi vicharya cha agyana dhvantva vidvamsa koti surya samabhrava bhakti gnana viragaptah viveko vardhate mahan maya moha nirasascha vaishnavehi kriyate katham this was the question raised by shaunaka to suta pauranika now who was suta pauranika he was the son of romaharshana who was romaharshana one who listened to the preaching of shukacharya along with parikshit parikshit was the direct disciple he was the one who was confused and wanted shukacharya to guide him in the right way but romaharshana requested 
Shukacharya to be seated by the side of Parikshit so that he could also study this glorious verse. Fortunately, Shukacharya accepted. So he got the bounty of, of Bhagavatam. Now, being the son of Romaharshana, Suta Pauranika already inherited the treasure of Bhagavata Purana. And there goes the story. Romaharshana was once preaching this Bhagavata Purana. Balarama entered the scene. Unfortunately, being absorbed in the glory of Bhagavata Purana, Balarama went unnoticed. He got wild. He immediately wielded its weapon and beheaded Ramaharshana. All the listeners immediately caught hold of Balarama. We had one Upanyasaka. You killed him. Now where will we go to listen anymore? Immediately Balarama realized his mistake. He blessed. Let the son of Ramaharshana be blessed with all the greatness of his father. He would become a Pauranika. He would preach you henceforth. Thus, by the blessing of Balarama, Suta Pauranika became a great orator. And he started communicating this Purana to whoever were in need, whoever were in pursuit. Shaunaka questioned Suta Pauranika, Bhakti, Jnana, Viragaptaha, Viveko, Vardhate, Mahan, Maya, Moha, Nirasascha, Vaishnavaihi, Kriyate, Katham. It seems this Kali Yuga is too deadly. I would like to improve, develop my Bhakti, Jnana, Vairagya. The more I try to do it, I get a feeling that I am getting drowned more into this samsara. We also get such a feeling. The more we want to develop in Bhakti, somehow we are being pulled and pushed back and forth by this samsara. Iha ghore kalau prayaha, jivascha asuratam gataha. In this deadly Kali Yuga, human being turned to be asuras and rakshasas. When my fundamental is not strong, when my realization on Sanatana Dharma is not right, there is no point in building Dharma about that. First, the foundation has to be strong. Then, the building would stand erect. You can do all your interior decoration, what not you want. But you cannot spend if the foundation is not strong. So, can you strengthen my foundation? This was the question of Shaunaka Bhagavan. Chintamanir loka sukham, suradruhu swarga sadhanam, priti shaunaka chittete. Now having questioned, he kept quiet. Then Suta Pauranika started talking to Shaunaka. Yes, this is a good question. When I reply to this question, not only you, but in the coming years, this entire universe would be benefited by the answer. It's very common that in olden days, pupils, the, the Shishya would question. But the question would not actually be his question. Instead, he would have a question on our behalf or he would have a question on people who will live after thousands and thousands of years. But we won't find great Upanyasakas or Acharyas after thousand years. So it is that sage Veda Vyasa who was so futuristic. He was futuristic because after 5000 years we talk about Bhagavatam today. And even after 50,000 years or 500,000 years, we will talk of the same Bhagavatam. There are many books that are published every week. Nobody would read them the next week. Whereas books like Veda Vyasa's Bhagavata Purana or Valmiki's Ramayana, they are not changed. Not a word is altered. We go through the same Ramayana. Even if another Upanyasa comes to the same city and he is also given the talk of Srimad Bhagavata Purana, he would also start with the same things. He won't change. You would have changed. I would have changed. But Purana would not have changed. It will remain the same because, after all, we can only see by our eyes, eat with our mouth, take with our hands, walk with our legs, think with our mind. These fundamentals are never going to be changed. Similarly, the verses of Vedas, Itihasas and Puranas will also not change. It's good that you have questioned, O Shaunaka, I'll reply to you. Srimad Bhagavatam Shastram Kalo kirena bhashitam, etasmad aparam kinchit, manashuddhena vidyate. You wanted to purify your mind. The best purifying agent is Srimad Bhagavata Purana. It's an easy purifying agent. You need not go to Ganga, not to Kaveri, not to Yamuna. You need not perform hundreds and hundreds of sacrifices. No need for Yaga and Yajna. It is enough. You recite the verses of Bhagavatam, listen to its 
esoteric meanings meditate on those meanings practice as many as possible or at least as little as possible start with at least as few as possible once you begin the baby steps taken will easily develop you to giant steps shukam nanda natva avadan sarve sakarte kushala sura then the whole satsang offered their salutations to shukacharya these are all not books printed in black and white ink instead they are the mind of the acharyas it's not that if you buy a book and read the passages repeatedly you will know the meaning of it it is only by devotion towards the acharya you can realize what is said in this kva sudha kva katha loke kva kacha kva manir mahan brahmarato vichar jeevam tada devan jahasah here they cite a good uh, hegeology it goes like that aitihyam kelli bitirgela hegeology is aitihyam this is something that has happened which is often quoted so that we realize a difficult meaning to make people understand the value of bhagavata purana this hegeology is quoted when shukacharya was preaching to parikshit all the devas entered they had the 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 pot of elixir amuda amruta kalasham cholran liya they had the pot in their hand they wanted to exchange it for bhagavata purana they offered they alludu parikshit they said we will offer you this elixir instead you give us you reciprocate you give us your bhagavata purana quick came the reply from parikshit he said i know the difference between bhagavata and amruta if you taste amruta yes you become eternal you don't die at all but unfortunately you will have to live in this material world without death this is the most dangerous part of it you can live without death now please answer my question would you like not to have death or would you like not to have birth which one would you choose if you choose not to have death then you can live in the same town for years and years together eternally would you like that to happen or once you have reached the eternal world then cease birth which is more important now as i am today i would not like to lead a life for hundreds and hundreds of years we have some physical ailment mental ailment our relationships our relatives and friends may not be good many things may not be good so if you decide today that i will live together forever i will live in this world then you will have to live with those all these problems eternally instead let us shed the problems reach the right place then not take birth after that that would be better nalla kekumbode irappa perappa na irappe vandan kattadinga perappe vandan kekkanam punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jathare shayanam iha samsare bahududsare so in this samsara ghora kaliyuga is difficult but at the same time kaliyuga has an alternate solution although it is the deadliest of the four it has some other benefits we used to say if one gate is closed other door is opened Thank you.